Hey now guys, it's me, it's me, it's Knockout21. How are y'all doing today? In this video, I'm, I'm gonna be talking about the EverDrive GG for the Game Gear. Ever since I upgraded my Game Gear, giving it new caps, a new screen, new power board, new audio board, it's basically like a whole new Game Gear. And ever since I did that, I've been having a blast playing all my classic games again. However, since I'm on the go a lot, I was looking for a flash cart and well, I found one. I went to Stone Age Gamer, found found this, and I guess I've been having a blast. However, there are some pros as well as some cons to this thing. And this is what this video is mostly gonna be about. I'm gonna go ahead and talk about how to get this thing going and show you one of the awesome things you could do as well as some of the setbacks you might come across. Anyway, let's go on to the next segment of this video. Okay guys, so this is what we're gonna do next. You're gonna need a, uh, a micro SD card. Master System and Game Gear titles aren't really that big. They top out around 512 kilobytes, like half a megabyte. So you really don't need anything big. Uh, around four gigs should be enough. But what we're gonna have to do first, it's gonna format it. It's gonna be in FAT32. Go, go ahead. Uh, it's already set on default FAT32, but if it's anything else, make sure you just switch it down to FAT32. I'm going to name it EverDrive GG, you know, because it's for the Game Gear. Start. Yes, yes. There's nothing on there, but it's, it's always a good idea to format uh, memory cards or SD, micro SD cards. Uh, once you get them, just to uh, avoid any glitches or anything like that. And there we go. And it's good to go. We're going to open this up. And we're going to put this uh, operating system. You can actually find this uh, this folder in Crick's website. I live a, I'll leave a link down below. But this is a new operating system, the latest edition. You're just going to go ahead and drag it into the root of the micro SD card. And then you could go ahead and load up some games. Uh, I'll probably do that off screen, but we'll just go ahead and separate them. We'll go ahead and put one for Game Gear. Ah. Game Gear. And another for Master System. Okay, now let's go on to the next screen. Now here are the three folders I created with the games already in it. There's a hex folder I'll get to uh, a little bit later. But basically, I put all my Game Gear games on the Game Gear folder, all my Master System games in the Master System folder. And right now we're in the Game Gear folder and I'm just kind of just scrolling through. Each folder supports about a thousand different files though I don't think there were a thousand different games, but that, that's how it's structured. And you could do all sorts of awesome things uh, while you're in this uh, menu. You could check out the, the ROM file, see how big it is, which mappers it used, and what system it supports. Here we got Surf Ninjas, gonna go ahead and check out, check out the ROM info. And you see right there, 512 kilobytes, which is the typical size for a lot of Game Gear games. They're sometimes a little smaller, but so far what I've seen is that Game Gear games are typically about half a megabyte. But enough of the scrolling around, let's just go ahead and uh, start a game. And let's go up to Ristar, select start, and right away the game loads. And, well, <laughs> there's nothing much to it than that.
Now flashcards nowadays have the ability to have like an in-game menu. You could do this simply by pushing up and one and two at the same time simultaneously and up comes the menu. After that you could either select to save a state or play a different game. However, if you're saving a state, you're only given one slot. So if you plan to make multiple save states, you know, to play different parts of a game, that's not going to be an option. But regardless, it, it is a pretty good feature to have nonetheless. Now, this is a hacks folder that I created uh, back in the beginning. And well, this is where I keep all of my hack games, homebrews, things of that nature. And remember the one game back in the previous video that I mentioned that needed a controller too? Well, with the benefit of a flash cart, you can now play patched games. This is Cyber Hunter, uh, in case you didn't know. And originally, this game needed a player two to, uh, to work, to access the item menu. But in this version, in this particular version that's been patched, you can easily access that same menu by pushing pause. This is all coming from my Game Gear. That's right, my Game Gear. Nothing, the, the, there is, there is, this is not my Master System with the Player 2 or Genesis with the Player 2 connected, no. This is my Game Gear and as soon as I push pause, the menu comes up and I can select whatever weapon I need. Now besides hacked or patched games, you could actually play homebrew. That's the neat thing about any flash cart. But when I saw this version of Tetris, I just had to try it. It was created by a guy named Armix and I gotta say, this is a pretty good faithful port of the Game Boy original. I actually went ahead and showed this to my wife and she couldn't stop putting it, putting it down. Tetris was her favorite game on a Game Boy and when she got to play this on Game Gear, she was kind of like amazed and flabbergasted and didn't want to give me back my Game Gear <laughs> for a while. But yeah, it's a neat little thing. Now, I gotta get back, get to some of the bad stuff about the, the uh, this uh, EverDrive. And this is one issue, and it's it's kind of minor, but it is an issue I have to talk about. And it's what certain Master System games uh, do. As you can see here, I access the in-game menu, and then the game glitches out on me. It typically happens to Master System games, not all of them, but it does happen to some, and no amount of pushing buttons or whatever could help can help you out. The best thing you could do in this case is to uh, turn off the game gear and start it again and everything will go back to normal after that. For those of you who don't know, several Game Gear games, especially earlier ones, are actually Master System games in a smaller cartridge format. My guess is, this, is that this was a cost-cutting measure that Sega implemented back in the day. And because of this, several cart readers would end up saving these games as a GG format, which as you can see, causes a bit of an issue in terms of color and screen size. But not to worry, there is a simple solution to this. Now, this part 
is very simple. This is a very easy solution to get your games looking good on the Game Gear. These are the two games I demonstrated. Castle of Illusion and Prince of Persia. And this is all you gotta do. Is rename, change the file extension from GG to SMS. Do you wanna change it? Yes. Rename. Do you wanna change it? SMS. Yes. And it's as simple as that. And let's go see how it looks back on a Game Gear. And just like that, the problem is fixed. The colors are right, the resolution is right, the scale is right, it plays great. I, I don't know what to say. It's a simple fix that anyone could do. Anyway, let me go ahead and finish up this video. And there you have it guys, the EverDrive GG X7 for the Sega Game Gear. I totally recommend this item to anyone that has a working game gear. It supports GG games, Master System games, SG-1000 games, hack games, modded games, you know, Japanese games. It, 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 it works on all of those. And it's just having your entire library on the go for just $149.99, which isn't too bad. It is a little bit pricey, I would admit, but for what it does, I say it's definitely worth it. Anyway, this was Knockout 21. Please comment, rate, and subscribe. And like always, have a good one. Take care, guys.